Now to the latest trouble for star Lindsay Lohan. She was arrested early Thursday morning here in New York, and she may now be facing new charges in California. 30 days in jail on a reckless driving case. Can you explain how Lou Taylor conspired to get Lindsay under conservatorship without Lindsay even knowing what was happening? So what I'm telling you is you need to follow the laws just like everybody else. You're no different than anyone else. So please don't push the luck. Lindsay Lohan has survived the darkest days in Hollywood. From a young age, she was shoved into the spotlight. Her father was in prison and her family needed money. So she worked all throughout her childhood until she couldn't handle it anymore. Her 20s were filled of mugshots and court hearings. She would party in the clubs at night with alcohol and drugs, get behind the wheel and cause chaos. Later in life, she decided to change her identity and move to Dubai. This opened up a bizarre chapter in Lindsay's life, where she started dating Saudi royalty and even attempted to kidnap a refugee. Lindsay Lohan has been through it all, so let's get into it. We are quickly approaching the new year, and I'm going into 2024 as my best self, which includes feeling great and smelling even better. Thanks to Scentbird, I have the best perfumes and colognes at my disposal. They are a fragrance subscription service that lets you choose a new designer fragrance each month for only $17. This makes for a great gift for yourself or anybody in your life. Everybody likes to smell good, but you get started by taking their quiz and they will match you with fragrances that you will love. Then you'll receive a 30 day supply of that fragrance straight to your door. This is my favorite subscription because I love trying a new cologne and I don't have to go and break the bank buying a full size bottle. This month I received an amazing scent titled Red Wine Brown Sugar by Boho Boco. First twist the top nozzle of the fragrance and then push down to release the product. This scent has notes of red wine, dried fruits, cedar wood, leather, and brown sugar. It's definitely a kind of smell I would wear to a formal event or maybe even a gala. Even the color of this product is so cool. It smells amazing and you have to try it out. Go to Scentbird.com and use code SloanHooks55 to get 55% off your first month. That's just a little over $7 for your first order. So definitely go and check it out. Use my link in the description below to get 55% off. This offer is available in the US and in Canada. Thank you. Simpered for sponsoring this video and enjoy. We're going to be talking about one of the most requested topics on my channel, Lindsay Lohan. She is an actress, she is a singer, and most of us grew up with her. But she's gone through a lot in her life, from her family life to her career, there have been a ton of scandals. And today we are unpacking everything. Let's start at the beginning, because Lindsay was born in 1986 in New York City. Her parents had a stormy relationship. Her father, Michael Lohan, was a former stock trader who frequently had issues with the law. He actually ended up going to jail when Lindsay was only four years old. Lindsay's parents had a turbulent relationship and she often witnessed them arguing and spending time apart. Michael in particular had a troubled past. He had legal problems for insider trading and had been sentenced to three years in prison in 1990. Lindsay's parents separated and reunited several times, only to finalize their divorce in 2007. The ordeal has affected the whole family, including Lindsay. The star has spoken out about feeling like a second parent and being put between her father and her mother. And obviously adding public attention and scrutiny did not help their relationship. Now, Lindsay never got the opportunity to grow up like a normal kid because she was thrown into the industry at a young age. She became a child model at the tender age of three and worked for brands like Abercrombie and Calvin Klein. She also appeared in ads for Wendy's and Pizza Hut. She even starred in a commercial for Jell-O with Bill Cosby. Jiggles and the jiggles are all over the place. Kids go ape and Jell-O great. Don't even get me started on Bill Cosby. But when she was 10 years old, she made her first TV debut as Alexandra Fowler on the soap opera Another World. So Lindsay was working from the age of three. I mean, she was pretty much working before she could even really formulate a sentence. And I think we can all agree that has to have some effect on how your brain develops and 
clearly your childhood. So like I mentioned, when she was 10 years old, she was on a show, Another World. But in 1998, her world changed because Disney was remaking the 1961 movie, The Parent Trap. This was by far Lindsay's breakout moment. Everyone was awarding her. She got so much popularity from being in that movie. So much success that it led to a three film contract with Disney. Annie James and Halle Parker are about to discover They're both unique in the same way. So essentially, that was the beginning of Lindsay becoming a Disney Channel star. Now, Lindsay didn't stop working after The Parent Trap. She starred in another Disney film titled Freaky Friday, which was also another big hit for her. Once that came out, she was a household name. And once 2004 came around, she was 18 years old and decided to move to L.A. She starred in The Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen and then starred in another movie, which was non-Disney, titled Mean Girls. Because she was was doing so well as an actress she was getting so much attention and if you guys remember the early 2000s paparazzis weren't too kind so even though she was doing great and winning these awards and getting all this recognition she was also being followed and stalked by these people who want to exploit her even though Lindsay was at the peak of her career she wasn't doing well personally and all of the pressures started getting to her she was working on the movie herbie fully loaded and she felt very ill she actually ended up going to the hospital for this and some people feel that Lindsay got ill at this point because of all of the stress, all of the work, and she's just a young girl. At this point, she was also working on her music career, her album, and she really just couldn't handle it. She was putting her work before herself and her body started to fail. In October 2005, she joined another Disney production, Herbie Fully Loaded. However, on October 21st, she was hospitalized for five days with exhaustion, fever, and headaches. Doctors attributed her health problems to the fact that she had been working long hours in a cramped vehicle. In the meantime, the press reported that her hospitalization was due to drug problems. Whether it was work exhaustion or it was drugs, Lindsay wasn't doing well. And it may have been drugs back then, but I don't know. Drugs became a problem at some point in Lindsay's life, and that became apparent. After moving to Hollywood, Lindsay Lohan was exposed to a lot of dangerous temptations. She started going to parties and hanging out with the show business crowd. Maybe she started messing around with them and she fell ill that way, but then once she started started with them, she really fell into the drug scene completely. And LA has a lot of temptation, so it's easy to do so. At this point in Lindsay's life, it seems like she started to lose herself. I mean, after moving to LA, it started to change her. So Lindsay is getting hip to the party scene. We're seeing her out more and more. And while her family is in New York, they're not doing well either because her father, Michael, has some violent tendencies. He was actually arrested on an assault charge. He was accused of harming a family member at a party at their home. Home. Because Lindsay is such a big name, automatically if her father is arrested, it's all over the press. Lohan's family life was also starting to fall apart. In June 2004, her father was arrested for beating his brother-in-law, Mark Coleman. Mark claimed self-defense, but he was still sentenced to prison. He would later be charged again for other offenses, including domestic violence against his new partner. So while her father is out here fighting people, Lindsay is fighting for her career because a production company CEO sends a letter to Lindsay, which is made public. I don't know how this letter went public, but she was working on a film titled Georgia Rule. And I guess they had to halt production because of Lindsay's exhaustion. Well, the CEO feels otherwise. He wrote this letter to her saying that you have frequently failed to arrive on time on set and today you did not show up for work. We are all well aware of your ongoing all-night heavy partying and that's the real reason for your exhaustion. Your actions on Georgia rule have been discourteous, irresponsible, and unprofessional. You have acted like a spoiled child and in doing so have alienated many of your co-workers. If you do not honor your production commitments including your scheduled call time for tomorrow and any call times thereafter, we will hold you personally accountable. Now James Robinson is the CEO and after this letter was made public, a lot of people had questions for him. He was quoted saying, she missed a day of work without telling anybody, and you can't have a whole crew and cast standing around, plus the cost of a half a million dollars a day is lost. The letter served its purpose, and she's a great actress. I rewrote this letter six times. I understand you were the one who sent this letter to Lindsay Lohan saying that you were kind of disappointed in her behavior. No, I wrote a letter to her that I rewrote six times, and I basically said, 
let's knock it off, get to work. I'm not going to put up with it. And she, she was fine. She came to work every day after that. Right. And what, what was it that she was doing that, that was problematic? She missed a day of work without telling anybody. And, uh, and that, that you, have a, you can have a whole crew and can't stand any around. And it looks like his letter worked because after he sent that to her, she showed up for work every single day. This was her first major slip up in her career and there will be more. But when she was asked about this, she said there were no problems. It's a great movie and everybody should see it. Now, in 2005, while she worked on that movie through 2006, she found herself in a lot of legal trouble. This article writes that Lindsay spent much of 2006 and following years entangled in legal problems stemming from probation violations, drug and alcohol abuse, and theft. She claims she got arrested for her first DUI when she was 20 years old and they found drugs. She says, quote, and from then on, the press were on me at all time. It was the first time I had taken drugs. I was out in a club with people I shouldn't have been with, took cocaine and got in the car. I was so stupid. Lindsay's struggle with substance abuse wasn't a secret to anyone. She started attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings at the age of 21 and later described alcohol as a gateway drug for her. In 2007, Lindsay admitted herself into a rehab center. But little did she know, this was just the beginning of a long, harrowing battle with addiction. Over the next six years, the actress was in and out of court-mandated rehab. Let's talk about these moments, because Lindsay actually drove into a tree while intoxicated and left the cocaine in her car. She lost control of her Mercedes-Benz convertible and struck a curb in Beverly Hills. Oh my gosh, a convertible too? Like, that freaks me out because they aren't as, like, strong on top. She then checks into Promises Treatment Center in Malibu. At this point, Lindsay was voluntarily fitted with an alcohol monitoring bracelet after her release from rehab. Thank God nobody was hurt in that incident where she hit a tree because there were two Two other passengers with her when she lost control. So why did these people even allow Lindsay to drive drunk? So it's great that Lindsay went into rehab and she put this ankle bracelet on and she's trying to take care of herself, but it didn't last for long. In July 2007, just two weeks after checking out of rehab, she is arrested again. A woman called the Santa Monica police saying that Lindsay was trying to run her down with a car. Lindsay is charged with drunk driving, cocaine possession, and driving with a suspended license. So she wasn't charged with trying to run this woman over she was charged because she had cocaine in her pocket and she wasn't supposed to be driving after her last incident at this point if Lindsay is convicted of these charges she's going to jail the arrest came after a chase and argument between Lindsay and a woman police described as the mother of the actress's former personal assistant so there was some depth to this it wasn't like oh you know she was just cut off by a random person she tried to go and chase down and run over the woman who is the mother of her former personal assistant, so I'm guessing they are on bad terms. Yeah, what did he do? Oh my god, sir, they're following us. We need help. Oh, where are you? We're right now, we're on Arizona. I need to know exactly where you are so I can send you help. Oh my god, are they following us? I need to know. Okay, sir, right now we're on Santa Monica. Where um, are you? I'm, we're in, I'm so sorry. What, what the I need to know where you're at, otherwise I can't help where's you. The Oh my God! What is he doing? What's going on? I, ma'am, ma'am, oh listen, oh God, listen sir. to me, ma'am, listen to me, okay? Answer my questions. Oh my answer my, oh answer my questions, okay? I need to, ma'am. They're in front of HQ now. Roll somebody code, ma'am. What's going on there? Hello. Oh my God! That guy on the phone. He is terrible at his job. I mean, I understand you want to find out where the address is, but clearly this woman is like distraught maybe like listen in for some clues instead of like constantly asking for an address when she's screaming for her life and she was afraid the police officer said she wasn't quite sure what was going on so she called the police saying that she wanted to make sure everything was going to be okay the personal assistant that is the daughter of this mother quit her job working for Lindsay only hours before so we don't know why she was chasing her down but probably has something to do with that she was arrested shortly after on july 24th for allegedly participating in a high-speed car chase with the mother of her former PA. These arrests have something in common besides cars. In both cases, Lohan was in possession of illegal substances, and though her possession amount was below the felony limit, she still spent time in jail.
So Lindsay got out of jail just a couple hours after being arrested, and she ended up going to rehab a few weeks later. In August 2007, Lindsay enters rehab for the third time. This time, she's going all the way to Utah. She's escaping California and trying to find some peace. That same month, she pled guilty to misdemeanor cocaine use and driving under the influence. She was ordered to serve one day of jail time, which I'm like, okay, one day? I mean, does that even do anything? And 10 days of community service. Lindsay was sentenced that day, and she did go to jail, but she was only there for about 84 minutes. So she wasn't there long and it's due to the, I guess the jail being overcrowded, but she got off pretty easily. Now in 2010, we really see Lindsay struggling because she had to serve 90 days in jail after missing her alcohol counseling sessions, which violated her probation. She was also sentenced to another 90 days of rehab after she gets out of jail. Lindsay was quoted saying, I did do everything that I was told to do and did the best I could. Photos later revealed that there was a profane message painted on her fingernails during the hearing. I guess people really weren't fans of her nail polish because it said like F you kind of like on her middle finger. It's not very classy for court, but yeah, it made a lot of headlines. Now this court hearing was one of the biggest in Lindsay's career because we saw so much footage of it. We saw her crying. We saw her being punished and she was such a party LA girl, you know, celebrity that the world never really seen someone like her in that position. And it is ordered to spend 30 days in jail on the reckless driving case, 30 days in jail on the first DUI case consecutive, and 30 days in jail on the second um, DUI case consecutive. That's 90 days in jail. The court is also going to order Dr. Sharma or appoint Dr. Sharma and Malinak, Kajal Sharma and Hai Malinak, to interview the defendant because within two days of her release from jail, she's ordered to report to probation and she's ordered to do a 90-day inpatient substance abuse program. Now, there's no way that Lindsay Lohan is going away for 90 days. I mean, not at her celebrity status, but all of this media attention probably provoked the judge to give her a harsh sentencing because they wanted to make a point that her behavior wasn't going to be tolerated. Now, she only served about two weeks of her actual sentence, but it didn't take long for her to go into jail, go into rehab, get out and get in more trouble. Poor Lindsay. She just cannot hold it together. And I think it speaks volumes about the pressure of her life and her family where she came from. While shopping in Venice, Lindsay visits a jewelry store and she conveniently walks out with a one-of-a-kind necklace valued at $2,500. The store clerk called the police to report it missing, which started an investigation into Lindsay. The LAPD obtained a search warrant to look at Lindsay's Venice apartment for the missing necklace. It is handed over to police by someone associated with Lindsay before the search could begin. Eight days later, Lindsay was charged with a felony for grand theft by the LA County District Attorney, and her arraignment is set for that afternoon. So they weren't wasting any time. They were going to get her that night. And unfortunately, her problems didn't end there. So they didn't waste any time tracking down Lindsay and charging her. But unfortunately, because she has been in so many legal problems, she has probations. And if she commits more crimes, she gets in even more trouble than she normally would. So in April, she spends five hours in custody before posting bail because she violated her drunk driving probation by stealing. She was also ordered to perform 480 hours of community service. However, her felony theft charge was reduced to a misdemeanor. So what I'm telling you is you need to follow the laws just like everybody else. Look around this room. Everyone in this room has to follow the law. The court, the DA, your attorney, the sheriff's deputies, everybody. You're no different than anyone else. So please don't Push your luck, because I'm telling you, things will be different. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Before we move on to some other scandals, let's just quickly talk about all of Lindsay's legal problems. She has appeared in court 20 times before four judges who have found her in violation of her probation four times and sentenced her to six months in jail. Still, she spent less than two weeks behind bars in her six trips to the LA County Jail. So now that we've talked about all of the legal problems, let's get into something a little bit more messy because there have been claims that Lindsay actually ordered an attack on someone named Baron 
Baron Hilton. Lindsay has been accused of ordering an attack on Baron Hilton, Paris Hilton's brother, while they were both parting it up in Miami. Paris actually posted pictures of her brother's battered face to Instagram on Saturday. Lindsay was at this party and there are some signs that she could be responsible. According to the police report, Baron got into an argument with another man in the early hours at this party. The man asked him to leave the party and when Baron refused, he was struck in the face with an unknown object. Baron visited the hospital a few hours later for treatment. Obviously, Lindsay didn't throw any punches, but according to some reports, the actress told this man to beat him up after she caught Baron talking trash about her. According to the website, Lindsay was also taunting him during the fight, saying, you talk crap about me to my boyfriend, this is what you get. Whether it's true or not, it's clear that the Hilton family does not like Lindsay. After Baron posted photos of his face, Paris wrote on Instagram, they both will pay for what they did. No one Fs with my family and gets away with it. Now, because Lindsay was out partying, getting in trouble, her family devised a plan to lock her up. But it's a different kind of locking up because supposedly Lou and Taylor who allegedly put Britney in her conservatorship also allegedly tried to work with Lindsay's mother to put Lindsay into a conservatorship. I've gotten so many cease and desist letters from this lady, so I say allegedly because she's probably going to see this. An anonymous source told Page Six that Lou, a deeply religious and principled woman, had developed a strong influence over Lindsay's life. Lou reportedly wired Lindsay $10,000 to bail her out of jail. So she's trying to get on her good side and work into the family and build trust. Can you explain how Lou Taylor conspired to get Lindsay under conservatorship without Lindsay even knowing what was happening. I mean, she went behind Lindsay's back and tried to, you know, tried to befriend Lindsay's mom, Dina, my ex-wife, the same way she did it with Brittany's father. She does target the weakest link, so to speak. And of course, what better time to do it than when someone's in rehab to say that they have issues and they can't take care of themselves. When in fact, even when Lindsay was in rehab, she was in a place where she could take care of herself. It's honestly crucial that Michael was here in Lindsay's life because if not, her life could have been completely different. She could be in a conservatorship and in the same situation as Britney Spears. He acknowledged that Lindsay had her issues with drug abuse, but she could still take care of herself. And when she was in rehab and sober, she was more than capable. But Lou had gone to Lindsay's mother and was able to brainwash her into believing that Lou could be the only one to save Lindsay from this situation. But like Michael acknowledges, Lindsay was vulnerable then and she needed someone like him to stand up and say no this isn't happening how were you able to prevent them from getting her under conservatorship you know i wanted information and she couldn't provide that information and the information she did provide was kind of deflected and she went on to another subject so she didn't address those the questions i asked so Michael didn't really know what to do to stop this from happening. So he decided to take the same approach they are taking. So essentially he wanted to become a conservatorship as well. Like if they're gonna manage her life, then he should have a say as well. He was quoted saying, since Dina, Lindsay's mother and Lou are going to try to be co-conservators, I had the choice of fighting it or petitioning for the purpose of appointing two conservators who don't have an interest in Lindsay's money, but rather her as a person and a human being. His plan calls for one conservator to oversee Lindsay's finances and another to handle more personal aspects of her life, from what she eats to what she wears to where she lives and who she can associate with. He said, I just want Lindsay's life and career to be guided by people who are in it with their hearts, not their hands. Now, I have to admit, I don't really like Michael's approach because I don't think putting her in a conservatorship under your rule really solves the problem. But he used his lawyers and he tried to build a case that, you know, Lindsay can't stay off of drugs and he needs to be the person who steps in. He says that every time that Lindsay has been to rehab that she went in dirty and didn't come out clean. And he blames it on the people in her life who have helped fuel her addiction. Now, Lou and Taylor was able to work as Lindsay's business manager, but she never became her conservator. Actually, in 2011, Lindsay actually fired Lou and Taylor as her business manager, claiming that there was some financial mismanagement. Sounds pretty familiar if you ask me. Some 
financial mismanagement. And she shouldn't be messing with Lindsay's estate nonetheless. I mean, she's not her conservator. She's a business manager who likes to pry. Even though she escaped this conservatorship, this wasn't the end of her roller coaster because at some point, the cops actually go to the press and express that they're worried for her as well. This report claims that the people closest to Lindsay aren't the only ones worried about her condition. Some police officers who routinely come in contact with Lindsay say they have serious worries about her. Cops who see Lindsay at her worst, late nights and early mornings when she needs assistance, tell TMZ that they have been concerned about her erratic behavior and attitude, which have grown worse over the last few months. We're told during one of Lindsay's crazier nights out, cops became so concerned that they discussed taking her in for a 5150. TMZ also included a note from a source. A professional who is extremely close to Lindsay fears that she's going to die if she doesn't get help for substance abuse. So Lindsay's not doing well and she kind of disappears for a bit. We don't hear much about her until 2014 where we see a completely new Lindsay Lohan, and she moves to Dubai. She went from being in the press for drugs and DUIs to being in the press for more controversial reasons. While in Dubai, she was criticized for cultural appropriation, being photographed with the Quran, wearing a headscarf, her change of accent, acting like a philanthropist, and then allegedly trying to steal a child from their mother. Then she also went on to date a prince. Now, her initial reason for explaining her Dubai move is because of the paparazzi. She claims that Dubai has made it illegal for paparazzi to follow people, so that's why she moved there. But quickly, things started to change, and her reasoning didn't make sense anymore. Because she had such a drastic shift, a lot of people felt like she was being influenced by this new culture and maybe being paid off to present this accent and change her identity. This article writes that Lindsay's strange new pan-European accent and visits to Turkey has put her in the middle of a geopolitical firestorm. For weeks, Lindsay has been talking talking as if she's lived in Europe her whole life. And make it good. And whereas in the past I've been associated with clubbing and nightclubs, I said, why not do my own? Americans are very close-minded in that sense. I know that because I'm American. I'm Italian-Irish. That video clip of Lindsay went viral because that is not the Lindsay Lohan that we're used to hearing. This article writes that Lindsay's new English accent and her interest in Islam are not alone for stirring controversy. According to a fresh conspiracy theory, Lindsay's support for Turkey is being backed by the Turkish government. Now, I don't know how you get to this theory. I don't know much about the Turkish government or their culture. But during her interviews, she said certain things that caught attention, like, quote, the world is bigger than five, which is a popular phrase, I guess, in the Turkish government. It's also a hashtag that she has used before when she visited Syrian refugees in Turkey, another tie to the Turkish government. Now, these government conspiracies get even worse when we see that Lindsay is dating a prince. He is the Saudi prince, and supposedly their relationship started over text message. But then he started to fly out to go and see her. He's been flying with her all around the world in a private jet. He gave her a gift-wrapped credit card. Dating that Lindsay had allegedly begun dating the prince, and he loaned her a private plane and nice little credit card linked to him. Now, Lindsay Lohan's representative would actually dispel these rumors, saying that they met only once at a Formula One Grand Prix race. The rep also denied that Ben Salon, who has been accused of ordering the 2018 of journalist Jamal Khashoggi gave Lindsay Lohan a credit card. Either way, pals of Lohan, who even say they've seen text exchanges between the pair, are boasting about what they claim is a new friendship. Now, this prince is a controversial guy, so I don't know how he dated Lindsay because they really don't have a lot of respect for women in his country. At least at this point, they weren't allowed to drive. A lot of restrictions have been put on women, and there was also a moment where the government had, like, murdered and dismembered a journalist out there. So this place and this government and this prince are controversial alone. Now, because Lindsay is in her international era and people are telling rumors about her relationships and how she's living her life, people are questioning her religious affiliation. And some people believe that Lindsay had now converted to Islam. Lindsay was seen carrying a copy of the Muslim holy book, the Quran, and has been public about her Arabic lessons. She posted a drawing on social media of some Arabic words, translating it to, you're beautiful, when in fact, the actual translation read, you're a donkey and Lindsay had mistranslated this post which was kind of embarrassing here's a video clip of an interview with this new Lindsay that we're still trying to get to know I was going through a lot um, with past things that had happened to me over a 10 year span 
and my very close friends who have been there for me a lot in London are Saudi, and they gave me Quran. And I brought it to New York because I was learning, and I was, and it was, it opened doors for me to experience and uh, spiritually to find another, you know, true meaning. And this is who I am. Now, for a couple of years, this is how Lindsay was. This was how she behaved, and she lived a very peculiar life. But in 2018, things got weirder because there was a bizarre video shared on Instagram from Lindsay where she approached this family, these refugees, and she essentially tried to take one of the children back to her hotel room, like trying to rescue this kid from their own family. A lot of people accuse Lindsay of trying to abduct this child, which is clearly not a good look. Tell me your story so I can help you. Do you want to stay in a hotel tonight? Do you want to watch movies? Yeah. It'd be so cool, right? To watch a movie on TV or a computer? Yeah. Let's go. You should not have them on the floor. You should be a hardworking woman. I'm freezing right now. And you should be doing what you do for your children so they have a better life. And if someone's offering them a home and a bed, which is me at this moment, give it to them. Look what's happening. They're trafficking children. I won't leave until I take you. Now I know who you are. Don't f with me. You're ruining our culture by doing this. Mshola wa lakh. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Hey, I will truly never ever get over that live stream. Like there's something so bizarre about that moment that I need like a full like two hour like interview, like explanation, like where their witnesses, like what was going on? What was she on? Like what, how does she think that that is okay? But I think it's bigger than that. I think she's trying to cope with trauma that she doesn't know how to cope with. Actually, she shares that she was in an abusive relationship with her fiance at some point. She dated a guy named Igor from 2016 through 2017, and they actually got engaged in the summer of 2016. In August of that year, videos surfaced of Lindsay and Igor in an altercation in Mykonos, Greece. Lindsay later said in an interview with Russia's Channel One that Igor broke into her home and started strangling her. She said, I feared that Igor may splash acid in my face, so I jumped out to the balcony and shouted with all my force, he's trying to kill me, call the police. And you can hear her saying, please, please, he strangled me, he almost killed me, everybody will know, get out of my house, do it again, I dare you, you're effing crazy, you're sick. Here's a clip of her yelling from the balcony. Unfortunately, this wasn't the first time that Igor got physical with Lindsay. She said, quote, the truth is I wanted to make things work, but I'm not sure that I can. Lindsay recounted an incident on the Greek island of Mykonos where the pair was celebrating her 30th birthday. During a fierce argument between the couple, Igor allegedly took her phone from her and then Lindsay then grabbed his phone and threw it into the sand and they were fighting and everybody saw it. This morning, the headline making photos raising big concerns about Lindsay Lohan and her Russian fiance, Igor Tarabasov. The photos capturing the couple in a fight on a beach in Greece. The mean girl star who turned 30 the beginning of July was vacationing in Mykonos when the dramatic scene was caught on camera. She accused Igor of taking her mobile phone because she couldn't find her mobile phone in her handbag. Then she tried to make a grab at his and ended up throwing his out of the Jeep. It landed in either the sand or the sea um, and, uh, and he went for her. 
This incident just happened days after we saw them fighting on the balcony where he supposedly strangled her and almost killed her. So they were still together at this point and they probably shouldn't have been. She actually claims that this fight that she had with her ex fiance inspired her to purchase her Mykonos Beach Club because it was at the club that this fight happened. So she decided to buy the club to get him back, which I don't know if that really like gets him back, but maybe it does in like rich people sense. Luckily, Lindsay is doing very well nowadays. She has given birth to her son. She's been working. She's been on the scene. We saw her do a Netflix movie. Uh, she's been involved with promoting the Mean Girls reboot. So there's been a lot that she's been up to. She had that holiday movie in 2022. Like there's just been a lot of great things coming from Lindsay. So I'm actually really proud of where she's at now after all of this mess that she has been in. We've seen her at fashion shows. We've seen her posting on Instagram. It seems like she's in a really good place. She's got a great relationship. She's got her baby and maybe that's what she needed to save herself. And maybe that's how she's coping with her childhood trauma by protecting her own child. Thanks again to Simford for sponsoring this video. Remember to check the links in the description box below and use code SloanHooks55 for 55% off your first month. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Here's my email if you have any other video ideas for me. And I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.